What's up guys, welcome back to the channel where I teach you everything you need to know about accounting, audit, personal finance, the CPA lifestyle, and everything in between. If that sounds awesome to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and welcome to the accounting channel. A lot of you may be starting in public accounting and if you're anything like me, when I graduated from college, I had no idea what to expect. Well today, I'm going to start a series on this channel called How to Audit. On this series, I'm going to cover everything you need to know on how to audit a company from beginning to end. In my opinion, I took a class in college called audit and it was not reflective at all of what I ended up doing in my professional career. When I started as an associate in public accounting, I had no idea what to expect. I hope this how to audit series helps you not only prepare for what's to come in the audit world, but something that you can come back to when you actually start getting into your actual test work. I will be providing certain examples on how to audit certain account balances, how to deal with certain transactions, and just everything you need to know about audit. I'm going to do my absolute best to cover as many audit and accounting topics as I can. So hopefully when you're actually at work and you're actually doing audit test work, you can come back to this series as a reference to help you guide you through some of the difficult transactions you're definitely going to deal with in your audit career. Today, I want to start off by giving you an idea of what the audit practice is, what your day-to-day -day responsibilities will look like at a public accounting firm, the top two skills that will help you get through your first year in public accounting, and why I think choosing to go into audit is a great decision for you long-term. Let's first get into what the audit practice is. Without getting too dull and boring because I'm all about making audit hella cool, a financial audit is where your firm is hired by a company to opine on the reasonableness of the financial statements at a point in time and for a period of time. As of would relate to the balance sheet because a balance sheet is a snapshot at a point in time of a company's assets, liabilities, and equity. The income statement, statement of equity, and statement of cash flows is for a period of time because it usually covers from the beginning of the fiscal year to the end of the fiscal year. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be January 1st through December 31st, but for the most part, a lot of companies do have a fiscal year that matches to the calendar year. So your firm is going to be opining on the reasonableness of the income statement for that period of time. In audit, you are giving the users of the financial statements reasonable assurance that the company's financial statements are reasonably stated for a period of time and at a point in time. And remember, publicly traded companies, the users of those financial statements are going to be the SEC or shareholders. And for private companies, it's typically going to be senior management or the bank or lenders. Let's now get into how your day to day is going to look like at a public accounting firm as a level one associate. As we discussed before, the purpose of an audit is to provide reasonable assurance to the users of the financial statements. You will do this by getting put on an audit team that will audit a company's financial statements. When you start in a public accounting firm, you can typically let the firm know what type of clients you want to work on or industries you want to focus on. In my opinion, in your first year in audit at a public accounting firm, you should try to get as much exposure to every single industry as you possibly can. This is really your year to learn and develop yourself as a professional. Once you let your firm know that you totally subscribe to the Accounting is Fun YouTube channel, like subscribe now, you're going to let them know, hey, I want to work. I'm open to work in any industry or I want to learn as much as I can. Then you'll have the scheduling team that schedules you on an audit. Once you're scheduled on an audit team, you are officially auditing the company. For the purpose of this example, let's say you get scheduled on a private company that requires only a small audit team. A smaller audit or engagement team will typically consist of two associates, one senior, one audit manager, one audit partner, and then one engagement quality reviewer, which is essentially another partner. The associates will be scheduled to complete testing over the less risky accounts such as cash, accounts receivable, accounts payable, and fixed assets. The senior will then have to review all of the work that is completed by the staff. The audit manager will have to review the entire audit file. The audit partner, depending on who you work with, will maybe sometimes review the entire file or only risky sections. And the engagement quality reviewer, which is essentially a second partner, will, will essentially come in and review all the work to make sure that all the standards, auditing standards were met. Once you're scheduled on an audit, you will either be going to the client site or nowadays you'll probably be working from home and then your senior will give you certain tasks every single day. At the beginning of each day, your senior should hopefully let you know what needs to get done that day, what sections of the audit you're going to be working on and how to audit those sections. Your audit senior will be your go-to person every single day. They should be teaching you every single day how to audit the certain sections you've been tasked with. Let's say you meet with your senior that morning. He tells you that you're going to be auditing the cash section. He will most likely go through the PPC list and verify that any documents you need to complete your testing, you already have from your client. Let's say, for example, you have a terrible client and they haven't provided any documents as of yet. 
Your senior will then walk you through and let you know what documents you need to complete your testing. Once you know what documents you need to complete your testing, for example, let's say you're doing cash, you will then either meet with your client, call your client or email your client and let them know, hey, I need a bank reconciliation and I need uh, bank statements and any other supporting documents that you may need to complete your testing. Once you receive everything you need to start your testing throughout the day, you're going to be utilizing your audit skills to get comfortable with a certain account balance. In my opinion, this is the fun part of audit because you are literally going to be an accounting detective making sure that your client's account balance is correct. Keep in mind, most if not all of your audit work papers are going to be in Excel. So you will pretty much be in the sheets like all day, like literally all day. Let's say, for example, you're having trouble reconciling the bank reconciliation to the GL or you can't really make sense of the bank statement or just something in the documents that you were provided doesn't make sense. You will either get on the phone with the client or go meet with them in their office in person and kind of walk through the transaction and make sure that they understand where you're coming from so you can understand the account balance to make sure that you conclude that the account balance is either properly stated or if there needs to be an adjustment to the account balance. This is where I feel like audit has its biggest advantage because you're kind of put in situations as a really young professional to have these conversations with your client where number one, it helps you build your interpersonal skills. Number two, it helps you build that competency and technical ability. And number three, you just get more comfortable with dealing with really tough situations. And I feel like you just really grow as a professional because of it. Let's now get into the two main things that you need to do before you start public accounting. The first thing you need to do is become as good as you can in Microsoft Excel. As I mentioned earlier, you're going to be spending a lot of time in the sheets. So the better you can be at Excel before starting in public accounting, the easier it's going to be to transition from student to professional. In order to help you with this, make sure to check out my Excel for Accountant series, which you can catch right here. That's going to go over the main functions that you're going to need to know as a staff auditor. The second thing you need to do before starting an audit is master debits and credits. Learning your basic accounting journal entries will be the key in building a successful audit career. Before you start testing an account balance, it is imperative that you know how the financial statements are impacted at the granular debit and credit level. Start understanding the basic journal entries of various business transactions because this will be the key in becoming a master auditor. I personally believe that you are making a great decision in choosing audit as a starting point in your career. In audit, you're going to become skilled in being able to provide support for the conclusions you reached. You will also build a work ethic that very few can compete with. And no matter what you decide to do with your professional career long term, having a strong accounting background will help you tremendously in any area of business. All right, guys, that's going to be it for the video today. If you found some value from the video, please make sure to hit the like button below. And also, guys, don't forget to share this video with any of your accounting friends that might be starting an audit pretty soon. Follow me on any social media platform you use. And until next time, work hard, dress well. Peace.